All right, game one, Pac-Man. What? Is it a... Hmm? 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 This is a button warmer. This has to be a button check. Yeah, this is a button check. Okay, I was so confused. I'm like, wait, I no recollection of Rival ever practicing or playing Pac-Man. Yeah, neither do I. I was like, wait a second, this is weird. He definitely does not play back now. I'm gonna check his Twitter. He should say zero, zero, zero suit uh, main. Hold on. As far as I'm concerned, the only other character he's ever really played, yeah. like practice, was like Sheik. No, he's zero suit. He's just I don't know what he's doing. I think he's trolling. Yeah, he's probably just doing it just to do it. He doesn't really want the bottom warmer. He's just spamming Scython. I don't know actually which Scython is. You know, just practicing his movement. Rival is kind of like yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who's MM Leo? He is a Mega Man from San Diego. Okay. Good to know. Although I saw him practicing the Miis earlier, so I have no idea if he's playing oh, to man. practice it. I'm going to keep it on my bracket. There's a chance I might just have to leave mid-set, but I just want to fill a spot for commentary. That's perfectly fine. Well, let's see. Rival. Should we play the Zero Suit? If he does decide to play with Pac-Man, that will be very interesting to see. I don't know if that would be too comfortable for him just yet. If it was Sheena, I wouldn't doubt it, because that man yeah. likes to play the entire roster. But yep, there it is. The there you go. Started on po Pokemon Stadium 2, it looked like. All right, game one. So on PS2. Uh, I think this is kind of like a pretty neutral stage for both of these guys. Like, there's not really a benefit. It is a pretty good layout for the Belmonts in general, but it does give Zeus a lot to work with just in terms of its space. Yeah, she can just move around a lot of time. Easier time avoiding projectiles. Those platforms do help just ever so slightly, but it's also a neutral benefit to Belmonts as well, so it's kind of just a neutral stage for both these characters. You know, I've realized is this might actually be a very good matchup for Zero Suit the more I look at it, just because um, Belmonts can't really um, use uh, forward air and back air in neutral as safely as they can just because of uh, Zero Suit Zare having longer range. So in terms of the trading, in terms of the spacing, the Zero Suit's more likely to actually just win the exchange. Yeah, that maneuverability also helps her use your time with punishing from Belmont's front or the Belmont's projectiles. I think the biggest thing for Belmont's in this matchup is at least like if you don't, if they don't establish a zone, then it's gonna be a big struggle. But if they are able to keep Zero Suit out like right here and just keep this going consistently, this is where you have to keep your advantage state. And that's another thing that makes it hard in this matchup is nice, good for is the flip pick. It just kind of negates the whole pressure zone. Like most characters have to like weave in and out through it. Yeah, there's a kind of just, just like, let me press one button and negate that whole thing. Rival, you should leave, but gets caught by Axe, will live. This is, that's like the one thing that needs to watch out for. If he gets caught mid flip jump, he doesn't really get it back. Yeah. And has to watch it, and then it becomes even tougher to try to get through all the projectiles. But T3 do will seal up the stock with the back here. Tying it up. This is also another thing. It's weird for Zero Suit to land against the Belmont. That up air has a lot of range up till he scoop it if you try to mix up where you're like landing into front or behind. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that move is hard to punish on shield, even with the parry. Well, the thing is, there's not much drift, so I think if I think if he just opted for the up air, it would have covered the entire like drift distance for that. Like you see that, like there is there is like it is kind of safe when it lands a little bit, but overall, like if you can preemptively expect a Belmont to up be out of shield when you get close to their yeah. shield, just as like an escape option for them. Okay, yeah. Ooh, he knew the angle. Oh, yeah, sick. he's practiced that a lot. Like as soon as he started charging, like he's like, yep, you're gonna fall right into it. He got the holy fire or the holy water, and then the cross will come back. He's like, just charge those smash. He's gonna knock him right here. Exactly. Getting that early stock. It also helps that he get knocked up really high, so the tip of the up smash hit, and he's already near the blast on that point. Yeah. So now this is where Rival comes into good time. He has to he has to approach more to get that lead back, or at least bring it back to even. Right now, Tito has a solid lead. That's the one thing that's really annoying about this matchup. If you get knocked away any bit. It's hard to up you up here because they nerfed the range on the grounded hit. Which one? So the way Zerusu Boost Kick works now is grounded hit is stronger but has a smaller range. Really? In the air it has a smaller like initial hitbox, but it also it also is weaker. Is the ground is stronger? You the said. ground is stronger but has a smaller hitbox at the beginning. 
while Aerial is weaker, but it has a lo bigger launch box. So you should really only be going for it if, if you have them in a stun. Or if they're right on top of you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so. They had it pretty even in the beginning, but T-Dome got that early stock and then just kind of steal after that. Rival really having a tough time getting back in because Dome really just got his pressure started and got his zone established. So I'm wondering where Rival's thinking to go. Typically, Dome doesn't like close quarter yeah. stages, so he typically bans like Smash Build. Or he likes a lot of space. So a lot of Belmonts like um, Town and City. Kalos and then Kalos. I've seen a lot of like Battlefield. Battlefield just because when they go for out of shield up B, they land on the top platform. Yeah, they have all, all the platforms and it feels like it's also hard for people to land because it's all the platforms away. So they miss and they land yep, on the platform. Exactly. Can, the air dodge you can just put those with them. Exactly. All the range. Just that layout is pretty good. But overall, I'd rather much, I'd much rather go to Battlefield over those two big stages. Kalos, yeah. Because yeah. at least this one, you have a lot of room to run around with yeah. Belmonts. You don't have to deal with it directly. You don't want him to have too much space to set up the zone. Yeah. This is probably his best bet. Um, Smashville can be hit or miss sometimes. If they get too much of an advantage state, it's just it's just never ending. Yeah, then because then your close course, you have to deal with projectiles. You yeah. don't have any space to run away. Exactly. So this is kind of like, it's the, better, it's the le lesser of two evils. It would seem like. Exactly. And that's if the Belmont don't ban it. Make sure I'm not being called yet. Good. Yeah. So it looks like Dome has his space established. Right, we're trying to get off the ledge. Good thing though that the mobility is insane. Mm -hmm. But we'll get thrown back off. Oh, catch the flip jump with the axe. Good catch. That's the one thing Zeus has to look out for. She does have invincibility on startup on her flip jump, but it still can be caught midway. Mm -hmm. so that's something nice grab. Can't really chase too hard because the Holy Fire did Gotta watch out for the up B. There he goes. Sorry, go ahead. I oh, know, I was going to say, he has to watch out. Or wasn't able to get the tech chaser, but that's irrelevant at this point. Okay, so we're just kind of flip jump over any of the projectiles. Waiting for Tito to throw an option. We'll just get grabbed on shield, though. So that move is a lot more punishable than people think. There's a the flip kick? In the flip jump, if it hits the shield, she does not act until she hits ground. How much drift does she have, though? Not too much. Not right? too much, no. It's like once she drifts in one direction, she can't really change it either, either, either way. Nope. Oh. So it's like available. Okay. I think Zerus is one of the best recoveries in the game. Depends if she has flip jump or not. Well, I mean, if all tools are available, then like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's ridiculous. So much horizontal. And that's like what. Oh. oh. That was. Interesting. Don't know why he went off it for the reverse. I think it was a misclick. I think it was a misclick for sure. So it just becomes the Jellicus begins. Didn't catch the downer actually, so. He's really getting away with a lot of these um, upbeats. Yeah, rivals drifting into shield too often, and like the rolling is in Tito on reaction will just up. There we go. So he catches the missing, tech miss exactly, with the back air. Yep, exactly. And I think that's what he's going to have to kind of rely on here because. Uh, Dome has been missing a lot of his decks. Okay, so got caught off guard by the second hit, or try to parry the down second hit, probably. I think if Rival's gonna watch this set back, and if you're listening, when you initially hit him at low percents, and he, he typically likes to go for air dodge, and if, I think you should try to like bait that into down smash to get your conversions, because there are some a lot, there are a good, good amount of openings that I've seen, but just like for future note, it might help. That's a good trap. Yeah, a lot of the times towards the Belmonts, they will rely on the Holy Fire to get their like hard yep. punches off, and like you should just you should, should just wait. wait. Yeah, because you can I've roll on reaction. Way. You can roll on reaction to get past Holy yep. Water. The thing is, you can't you can't wait too long because they'll, they'll hit you. That and if you're at higher percents, you have less invulnerability when you snap ledge. Yep. So there's actually a tighter window. So you should actually be timing, um, looking out for when he sends it out before you snap ledge. And then either choose to roll, depending on what he's charging, or re-snap ledge, or it really depends on your character. But sometimes you can just like roll through it. When he throws a projectile, there is a there is a way to get off the ledge. You're not exactly oh, yeah. trapped there forever. Yeah, of course. The only way that you'd be stuck is if you got all the projectiles out at once. Yeah, a little bit of a pickle. But for the most part, when the Belmont start initially ledge trapping, you have an option to get off. There, yeah. You're not stuck. But I think what would help people a lot with this match, that was sick. Yeah, caught, um, the, caught the drawback on the cross. What I think a lot of people should do is like play Belmonts, throw out all the projectiles, and hold shield after each one, and see how laggy it is. Because I think Axe is really laggy. Oh yeah, it's there's a lot of startup, and it doesn't really cover too much range. And same with uh, down tilt, like the full thing. 
he actually has so much lag. I didn't know this until I think Razo told me. Yeah. If he crosses up your shield.